So what we want to do now is to talk about the syntax that is generally that that is uh, uh, that logic programming uh, languages are based on, or or uh, the syntax that are used in in logic programming languages. And what is important to to realize is that. Uh, Logic programming uses a special kind of a logic, which is called first-order logic, or, or uh, often called also, also predicate calculus. And uh, the, the language of first-order logic consists of three components. Uh, there's, some, there's some alphabet that we use, which uh, uh, is a set of logical symbols and, and a set of non-logical symbols. Then there are some terms defined over this alphabet, and and then finally some uh, well-formed formulas defined over this alphabet. And let's look at each of these in 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 turn. So if we start with the alphabet, the alphabet uh, uh, has a, a set of logical symbols and a set of non-logical symbols. So for the uh, for the logical symbols. Uh, those are actually symbols that the computer science computer science students are, are uh, should know quite well. We have the logical connectives like a conjunction or and. We have disjunction or or. We have negation. Uh, we have implication, and we have uh, logical equivalence. Uh, and uh, every computer science student, of course, should know these uh, uh, or be familiar with these logical symbols. Then we have constants, propositional constants, true and false. Those are, are part of the logical symbols. We have quantifiers, exist and for all. And then we have some punctuation symbols like uh, brackets or parentheses and a comma. And finally, we have an infinite set V of variables written like X, Y, Z. So, for example, in the In uh, Prolog, when I was running earlier this uh, predicate uh, sol solution x, I provided the predicate with a, a, a variable. This was a variable x. So we have a set of logical symbols in our alphabet, but we also have a set of non-logical symbols. And those are function or predicate symbols. Uh, function uh, sigma and predicate symbols uh, pi. Uh, and what is the difference? Well, we can think of it this way, that predicates are something that return uh, true or false. So predicates return Boolean, whereas function can return any other values. And often we say that predicates are relations, and we will talk about that later when we start uh, talking uh, in, in some more detail about Prolog. So this was the first part, uh, the alphabet itself. Then the question is, what are terms defined over this alphabet? Well, uh, terms over sigma, over the function symbols, uh, and over the set V of variables, uh, are defined inductively as follows. A variable is a term, and if f in sigma is a function symbol of arity n, arity means the number of argument, it has n argument, and t1 up to tn are terms, then the composite term f of t1 up to tn is a term as well. Uh, uh, just to note that a constant is a term. So if we have for a constant is, is really, we think of a constant as a function of arity zero. So that means uh, uh, it doesn't have any arguments. So a function would be written uh, in this manner 
f and then no arguments. But the normal way of writing a constant is actually without the parenthesis. So just something like, well, let me actually use a instead here because that's customary. Uh, this is actually used, uh, uh, normally we write a constant like this, without any parenthesis. So a constant is a term. Constant is, is a kind of, a, we can think of it as a function according to this description here, with added to zero. Then we have uh, uh, the name of the constant and parenthesis open, parenthesis closes, but we just skip the parenthesis. And then if a and, G, a and b are constants, uh, meaning uh, terms, and x and y are variables, and f and g are functions of arity 2, then for example f of a comma b, f of a comma b is a term, because uh, a and b are constants, and uh, f uh, is, a, is a function. So a is equal to t1 in our ex definition and b is equal to t2, t1 and t2. g of a comma x is also a term. This is also a term because we have a function here and then we have two terms. This is a constant but this is a variable. So we're saying that a variable is a term. And uh, one more example on the slide, g of f of a comma b comma y, this is also a term. g is a function and this would be f of a comma b would be our t1 and y would be our t2 in this definition, t1 and t2. So this is, in a way, this is kind of a nested term. We have a function inside that term. We have another term that consists of a function and two constants. So this was the second part. We have terms defined over this alphabet. And then finally, we have well-formed formulas defined over this alphabet. And uh, these formulas are, allow us to express uh, the properties of terms. So, for example, given the predicate uh, greater than, if we write greater 3, 2, we, we want to express the fact that the term 3 corresponds to a value with, uh, which, which is greater than that associated with the term 2. Um, and predicates can, can also be used to construct complex expressions using logical symbols. So, for example, uh, greater than x, y, if that's true, and greater than y, z, then it applies then x, z, that x is greater than z. If x is greater than y and y is greater than z, then x is greater than z. Uh, now we can give a def definition, more formal definition of, of formulas, uh, uh, a form formula over the signature with the, the terms sigma and uh, phi. Remember, sigma was the uh, the set of functions and uh, pi was the set of predicates. Uh, if t1 up to tn are terms over the function signature, and p, p, sorry, yes, p uh, is uh, is in pi, is a predicate symbol of additive n, then p of t1 up to tn, this actually should be tn here, is a formula. So uh, we have terms and we have uh, a predicate symbol. If we compose that, we say p of the terms inside the parenthesis, then we have a formula. True and false are also formula, the true and false uh, uh, symbols, the Boolean symbols. 
And then if f and g are formulas, then we can construct other formulas by using the logical symbols like not f, we can do f and g, well, this is conjunction of f and g, this is the disjunction of f and g, f or g, f implies g, and uh, this is logical equivalence here. Uh, and finally, if f is a formula and x is a variable, then we can use the quantifiers like for all x, uh, f and there exists an x such that f uh, uh, is true. So for all x, f is true, and, for, uh, and there exists an f, uh, there, six, there exists an x such that f is true. And notice then we, we probably have x occurring in f then, because we're using quantifiers here. So uh, this is just... Uh, uh, the definition of uh, really uh, logical formulas. And uh, here are some three examples. Uh, let's assume that we have a predicate uh, uh, which stands for a, a philosopher. So f if A is a philosopher, then it applies that A is a scholar. Let's assume that scholar, skull is a predicate uh, meaning scholar. So, what we have here is that philosopher A implies that scholar A is true as well. So, philosopher here is a predicate and A is a term. So we really have P of T1 here. If we go back, we can see if T1 up to Tn are terms and P is a predicate, then P of T1 up to Tn is a, is a formula. So we have, we indeed have a formula here. And the same is true here. We have a predicate and we have a term. And we could say that this is my f and let me just write this as philosopher of A and G is scholar of A then f implies G is also a formula according to uh, point number three here. If f and G are formulas then f implies G is a formula as well. Now here we have for all A, uh, it is true that if A is a philosopher, it applies then A is a scholar as well. So here we're using the for all quantifier. And that's part number four here. If F is a formula and X is a variable, then for all X, F is a formula as well. So we're basically saying here that uh, this is my F, phil philosopher of A is my F, scholar of A is my G, and then I'm saying for all A, F implies G. And then, similarly, I can use uh, the other quantifier, exist, that is sixth and A, uh, such that A is a philosopher and not a scholar. And this is a valid formula as well, because uh, I'm using quantification. Phil of A is a formula. I can use and to compose two formulas, and I can use not, the logical uh, operator not here. Uh, that's point three in the definition. Now, so what has this uh, to do with the logic programs? Uh, these uh, well-defined formulas in, in first-order predicate logic. Well, it's because we use clauses in logic programs. And clauses are a particular classes of formulas. 
and these this particular class lends themselves to a more efficient manipulation in particular using a special inference rules which we call resolution and that's something we will talk about later uh, and we have something called a definite clause which is, which is really a restricted version of this concept of a clause and uh, this particular form is also called horn clauses and it looks like this if we if uh, h and a1 up to an are, are formulas then a definite clause is a formula of this particular form where we have h and then uh, um, double co uh, sorry colon uh, uh, dash and then a1 up to a n and uh, this is a special syntax and uh, which looks like this h and then we have uh, colon dash and a1 up to uh, a n and this colon dash is actually something that we saw earlier in our example in our first example for this problem uh, that we had before so notice here that we're using colon dash in all these example colon dash here you can actually and I didn't show this earlier you see the definition of the sublist uh, predicate for example Suplex actually uses another predicate called prefix and suffix, which are defined up here. But I'm not going to go into that now. But notice that it, this is the particular syntax. We have something on the right, left hand side, and then we have colon dash, and then we have something on the right hand side. And what does this mean? Uh, well, we'll, we'll come. We'll come to that in a minute, but notice that if n is zero, then the clause is really a fact, and then we we th this this particular simple colon dash is omitted, but not the final stop. So if we have nothing on the right hand side, we really have a fact, which would be written like this: just h colon, nothing on the right hand side. In general, we have a colon here. And a query, or it's, uh, it's also called a goal often, is a sequence of atoms of this form. When I pose a query, I do something like this, a1 up to a n. And I actually did a query earlier in Prolog where I did soul of x. This is a query that I made. Uh, I was basically asking for a solution to uh, x. Uh, uh, I asked Prolo to give me, uh, to instantiate this variable x such that it fulfilled the condition. Um, and notice this, in this particular query, I, o I only have a single predicate. So I would, I only have um, one, I, have, I only have a1 here. I don't have more in that particular query. So uh, we're saying that it looks like this, h uh, colon dash and then a1 up to an. And this symbol uh, denotes reversed implication. So, and the comma uh, denotes logical conjunction. So the comma denotes uh, and. So what does that mean? Well, the above, h colon dash and then a1 comma a2 comma up to an is just an abbreviation for this, that a1 and a2 and up to a n implies h. So that's why we say it's a reversed implication because the right hand side actually implies the left hand side, not the other way around. And the, the full stop is part of the notation, uh, the period, it, it's a terminator, it terminates this uh, this um, rule, can we say, 
And the part on the left of colon dash is called the head of the clause. So H, that's why we're using uh, the letter H, that's the head of the clause. And the part on the right is called the body of the clause. And a fact is therefore just a clause with an empty body. As we looked at earlier, if I just have a fact like this, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a clause that doesn't have any right-hand side, so the body is empty. Uh, and a program, a logical program, is then just a set of clauses. And if I, we go back to the program that we looked at first, we have a logical program here, and this is a set of clauses. Notice that I have a prefix. I have, uh, here I have one clause, which really uh, describes the prefix predicate. I have another clause here. I have the third clause. I have the fourth clause. And I have the fifth clause. So this is a set of clauses, this logical program. And let's just end this with a, a simple example program. Uh, in a uh, simple example uh, logic program. Uh, this is a set of clauses. This is a set of two clauses. Uh, and the first clause is actually a, a fact. It's a fact because it doesn't have any right-hand side. And what is this? This is a predicate. This is the predicate append, which uh, basically states that uh, append empty list comma y comma y is true. It's a fact. What what's the semantics here? Uh, if I append the empty list to a list y, I get y back. That's what it means here. Uh, notice that there is actually no in uh, there is no uh, uh, obvious meaning. It's the meaning that I as a programmer uh, uh, give to it. The 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 language itself doesn't um, uh, contain any predefined meaning for predicates. I have to uh, interpret it myself. Uh, I just say here that if I am a pro uh, if I I as a programmer uh, uh, program this uh, append relation. I look at it this way that the first argument is uh, the first two arguments are the ones that I want to append. I want to actually append y to append the second argument to the first, and the result is the third argument. That's that's the semantics of this append relation. And the second uh, the second uh, uh, clause is a rule because it has a right hand side and how should we interpret it well we should interpret it this way that if append x y z is true then it applies that append uh, h this is actually the header h and the tail x comma y and then a list that contains the header and the set, the header h and, and the tail set is also true. So this is a, remember, reverse Im, uh, implication. Uh, what if the, the thing on the right hand side is true, then it applies that the thing on the left hand side is, is also true. And uh, I'm not going to go into uh, the the how this append relation works at this point. We will do that when we look at uh, the pro pro Prolog programming language. But at this point it's just important to notice that the first uh, clause is a fact, whereas the second clause is a rule that has a right-hand side, which is the body, and uh, a header, which is on the left-hand side.